Good afternoon. Madam Rajavi, all of the uh, distinguished guests that are here, I'm very, very, uh, very honored to be here today. And I must say, when I look out at this audience and I think about where I am, I, I can't escape uh, the very, very strong feeling that I'm in Berlin. I'm in a city that knows about oppression. I'm in a city that knows about the lack of human rights. I'm in a city that was dominated for much of the last century by the SS and the Stasi, a city in which people were killed, people were murdered, people were shot, people weren't allowed to cross a wall, people were shot going across a bridge trying to seek freedom. That's all they wanted was freedom. And they were murdered and they were killed under the name of Nazism, under the name of communism. What does it matter? And both, both, both of those struggles, the first one, Nazism, caused by appeasement, caused by a, a West that refused to stand up to Hitler, caused by a Prime Minister of England who thought he had come home with a piece of paper that was going to guarantee peace. And then the world went to war. 60 million people killed. 6,000 Jews exterminated. Genocide. Orthodox religion attempting to wipe it out. All of this because we wanted to appease. We wanted the easy way out. We wanted an agreement for the sake of having an agreement. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like history is repeating itself? Does it sound like we have people in power who can't read history, who don't understand? Once again, we face an ideology that we cannot live with. We face an ideology that threatens all of us. We face an ideology that wants to take away from us our basic rights. This is a regime that has proven to us that it shouldn't be trusted with any kind of nuclear capacity. And I ask you this question. Why does Iran need the peaceful use of nuclear power? Why? Iran has 300 years of oil, even more of natural gas. It's not without energy. It's not without power. If you believe for one moment what Rouhani is saying, what the Ayatollah is saying, that they want the peaceful use of nuclear power, then you know what you are? You're stupid. You're dumb. You're ignorant. Or you so desperately want an agreement that you will do what Chamberlain did, take a piece of paper that is worth nothing and lead us into war. This is the International Day of Women tomorrow. It was a woman who led out of bondage her husband in one of my favorite operas, written by Ludwig von Beethoven. We came into his music today. The last part of the Ninth Symphony. Women aren't weak. Women aren't powerless. Women have, women have tremendous power and tremendous strength. 
Together, you're a force that can't be stopped. I would like all of the women here to just stand up. I want you to stand up. Stand up! Just want to see the women. Look at all of you. Look at all of you. Look at you. Look at you. And what are they doing to your sisters in Iran? What are they doing to your sisters in Syria and in Iraq? What are they doing to your sisters in Yemen? They're treating them in ways that are inhuman. You can't let this happen. You've got to let the world know this. The world has to know what the distortion of Islam, Islamic fundamentalism, what it is doing to women, what it is taking it away from them. What kind of reformer is Rouhani? Can the administration in my country recognize that? They are negotiating with a man who takes rights away from women and a man who has ordered the execution of thousands of people. In yesterday's New York Times, which I don't usually read, it had a headline. It says, U.S. strategy in Iraq increasingly relying on Iran. U.S. strategy in Iraq increasingly relying on Iran. We lost thousands of young men and women to liberate Iran. And we are turning it to liberate Iraq. And we are turning it over to Iran. What's wrong with us? On the front lines, on the front lines in Iraq is General Suleiman, one of the aviators who fought in that war says, General Suleiman, who he knew, is just a more stately version of Osama bin Laden. And then all of this, all of this, all these terrible things that are happening to women, this terrible agreement that's being discussed. There's no alternative. We have to have this agreement. There's no alternative. Would you come and look here? Would you look at all of these people here? Can you see how many people are here in Germany? Can you see how many people Madame Rajavi brings to Paris? A hundred thousand? If you had been with me in Arizona a few weeks ago, just about the entire state legislature of the state of Arizona, what do you mean there's no alternative? There is an alternative. It's very simple. Here's the alternative, a non-nuclear Iran, an Iran that has elections for its officials that are fair and honest, all religions or no religions. It should have a constitution that guarantees women equal rights with men. It should have a constitution that sets up the rule of law. And then, then we will have achieved what we owe to the people of liberty, because I conclude always by talking to them. We're talking, we're fighting, we're working very, very hard. And I admire all of you, and my admiration for Madame Rajavi is eternal. But the people on the line here are the people at the concentration camp called Liberty, that was created not just by Iraq, but by the UN and the United States of America. 
I feel great guilt for my country. I am embarrassed for my country. And if I stay up here a minute longer, I will probably start crying. My country promised every one of those people in liberty, gave every single one of them a piece of paper signed by an officer of the United States Army, gave them a promise that they would be protected by the United States of America. I sat in Senator McCain's office three weeks ago, and we looked at one of those documents, and I can't tell you what we said because it can't be repeated. But I am embarrassed and ashamed. My country should live up to its promise. Every one of those colonels, every one of those generals has been on a stage like this asking for our country to live up to that promise. To the people of liberty, please know that your sacrifice, that your sacrifice will ultimately be the reason that your country is liberated. And there is nothing more glorious, nothing more wonderful, nothing more fulfilling, and nothing that can make your life more worthwhile than to liberate your own people. Two days later, we'll say, how did it happen so fast? You know why it happened so fast? Because millions of people are living in oppression. They need one thing. They need one leader. They need one action that will move them forward. And you, the women of Iran, the women of the Middle East, the women of the world, you can lead this. Iran is the most dangerous regime in the world. It should be removed for the safety of the world. And we should stand with the people of Iran who want to do that. Let's have courage and do not give hope. God bless you.